Please. The GoPro Hero 10 is an insanely useful camera. I've used it for vlogs, I've used it for cinematic and action shots, I've even used it as simply just a third camera angle. But can it really shoot a cinematic video like a DSLR? Well, that's what we're gonna try to test out today, so let's get to it. And this is where I normally snap, but I can't because I'm holding two cameras. <laughs> As you probably already saw, we are going to be out here in somewhat sunny San Diego to film a cinematic sequence with this GoPro. And as we shoot, I'll explain the differences I feel between the GoPro and the DSLR, in this case being the Sony a7S III. Now, as we go and shoot, the settings I'm gonna use for the GoPro are the 4K24 and the 120 FPS. So 120 for some slow motion. And we're gonna switch between the wide and the linear lens just so it fits whatever composition that we're trying to get. Yeah, let's do that one more time. That was great. So we're gonna walk towards the gate. Yeah, look explorative. Open the gate, and that's gonna be a match cut right there to the next shot. So we're only a few shots in, and I'm already feeling a huge difference between the DSLR and the GoPro when I'm shooting these shots, and that's the fact that I can't control the aperture on the GoPro. On a DSLR, I can choose what f-stop I want, and that's gonna create that bokeh, that really nice blur you tend to see in cinematic video. So not having access to that because the GoPro doesn't have that option is kind of, it's, it's kind of, I don't like it because I can't make the shots look as pretty or add as much depth into the sequence as I'd like. For the first few shots, you saw that the GoPro captured them pretty well, I would say, but I still wish I had a DSLR at this point because with the DSLR, relative to whatever aperture I choose, which would be pretty thin, something like f2.8, I could choose where to focus in the image and create a lot more depth. For example, I could focus on Harleen, and so the bench would be kind of blurred out in that bokeh, creating a lot more depth and interest in the image, whereas if I chose to, vice versa, focus on the bench and Harleen's in the bokeh in the blur, it can make the intro sequence have a lot more mysterious air around it, per se. You kind of guess and you kind of get an idea of what might happen next. Now we're kind of doing trickier shots where we have a little bit more camera movements we're doing a lot of handheld camera movements and this is where the GoPro completely outshines this DSLR and that's because it has hyper smooth which is basically a stabilization feature inside of the GoPro that's on steroids I could do any sort of movement with this camera and it'll pretty much have a stable not shaky shot whereas with the DSLR I have to do that with the gimbal and the gimbal takes time to set up it's a huge setup so it can get really annoying to carry on and it, it just can be a huge hassle that's what I'm trying to say however with the GoPro it's a quick one too and we're good to go. I just had this really awesome idea. I'm gonna attach the GoPro to the gate just like this. And what's really cool about this setup is you're gonna get a super unique perspective in this case from the gate's perspective of how Harleen's walking through the situation. And this only really works because of the hyper smooth in the camera, the stabilization. I really enjoy this hyper smooth because it lets me come up with really creative ideas and then actually execute them. Oh wow, it's even taking care of the micro jitters in the GoPro, that's crazy. Yup, all the way around the corner. Perfect. You can see Harleen over here. She's just gonna walk around the corner and we're gonna try to use the bushes next to me to get this nice foreground shot. Okay, anyways, go for it. Using the branches as foreground. Yup, pulling out to the bridge. This is also where I would prefer to use a DSLR because the low aperture is gonna give us some bokeh through the foreground. One of the things I just realized as I was shooting, I really hate the fact that the GoPro doesn't have a flippy screen. I can't see what I'm shooting, especially when I'm in a tight area trying to get these low angles. Whereas with my DSLR here, let me just show you really quick record on the GoPro. I have some sort of vlogging setup. I can see what I'm actually capturing and that just makes it so much easier to get the shots that I want. This is just so tedious, bro. 
Okay, that just looks weird. I'm, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Another huge difference I'm starting to feel between the DSLR and the GoPro is the fact that I can't zoom in nearly as much as I'd like to. Whereas with my DSLR, I do have the Tamron 28 to 75 on it. So I have that huge focal length, that huge range that's gonna allow me to get a bunch of different shots. It's gonna allow me to portray a bunch of different elements, basically just get a lot of looks to add to the sequence. Whereas with the GoPro, I'm trying to do the same thing by only using the wide and linear lens mode on this camera. And it's not enough. It's actually very restrictive and it makes getting cinematic shots really hard. You've probably already noticed by now, but a lot of my shots are wide shots. And that's because the GoPro is a naturally wide lens camera. Now that means that capturing those detail shots, those close up shots can be difficult. Not because I can't get close up on my subject, but because even if I do, it doesn't feel like it's in that tighter frame, that tighter look that really makes it feel like you're dialed in on whatever you're focusing on. Now, it's also very difficult to set up composition sometimes because it's always a wide look and just experimenting with the different positions of where I can put the GoPro can get really tedious. However, the best thing about this GoPro, in my opinion, is how crazy creative you can get with it with the different interesting shot angles you can capture. Wow. That was wordy. Basically, what I'm saying is you can get extremely cool shots with this GoPro that the DSLR will never get. And that's because the GoPro comes with so many different mounts, you could place it pretty much everywhere. It all comes down to how crazy of an idea you can think of, right? So for example, I'm about to put this GoPro on a simple drone. Check it out. Now you must be wondering, how are you gonna mount your GoPro to your drone, Anuj? Well, if you look at the bottom of this mount right here, there's 3M tape, so all we're gonna do is just quickly uh, peel it off. I'm trying my best. There we go. And then what we are going to do is very carefully try to align this GoPro on the drone without putting too much weight on the front here, something like this, and strap that bad boy down. And voila, look at that. Honestly, it looks kind of cool. Maybe we should do this more often. <laughs> Come on. So it looks like the drone actually isn't listening to me with the extra weight on the GoPro as much as, I, as much as I'd like it to. So that's kind of annoying, but it makes sense. Like it's taking a while to respond to me. Yep, there we go. I think we got it right. All right, and now we just simply pull back at a good speed and Hope it works out. Yup, that looked gorgeous. So I've attached the GoPro to a Gorilla tripod. And what a Gorilla tripod is, is basically just a tripod with flexible legs, meaning that I could put it anywhere. And that's what makes this so interesting because the GoPro is small and the tripod can let me put it anywhere. I can go ahead and put it on this gate to get a really cool perspective. Now, I'm not gonna do it like this. I'm actually gonna have the GoPro and I just broke it. So that's very awkward. Yeah, anyway, so we're just gonna replace the broken Gorilla tripod with the GoPro clip. Same functionality, you can still put it anywhere. We're working on it. Always gotta get that classic walk over the camera shot. Another interesting spot I could attach this GoPro. Originally, we were gonna do it with the Gorilla tripod, but remember, that broke. With the clip, we're gonna put it up here, attach it to this branch and get a cool top-down sort of angle. All right, and she's close by. Now we're gonna go forward at a good speed. Yup, all the way through. Yup, we're just gonna keep going until we get a good view. Now, if we put all of that together, can the GoPro shoot a cinematic sequence? Absolutely, this camera is fucking sick. I would recommend it to anyone. However, in the arena of cinematic video, I still don't think it measures up to a DSLR. And that's because the DSLR is gonna give you those awesome technical capabilities that really boost your creativity. It's gonna really bring out the cinematic feeling in a video. There was a lot of times when I was shooting with this GoPro today where I thought, oh, if only I could shoot this shot with my DSLR because I had that access to bokeh, the aperture, shutter speed, and all that good jazz. But that kind of brings up the next point, which is that because both of these cameras in a way can do what the other camera cannot, for example, this GoPro can get some angles that the DSLR will never get, whereas the DSLR can give you that bokeh, that blur to make it really feel immersive. If you put those two together, you can really create some 
absolutely insane epic cinematic sequences. Since you now know the differences between a GoPro and a DSLR when you're out shooting cinematic video, I'll leave a side-by-side -side comparison video between the GoPro Hero 10 and the Sony a7S III right over here. Go ahead and check that out. And if you want to see what settings I use for my GoPro, as well as a little bit of color grading, I'll leave another video for you right up here. Hopefully my hands were in the right place. So don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. You know I'd love to have you and I'll see you next time.